<laughs> Hello YouTube, Sentinel H here for episode 47 of my Rotary Craft tutorial series. In this episode we're going to take a look at the Fluid Compression Chamber, a really high capacity uh, storage device for liquids and gases. Okay, so how do we craft this thing? Well it's actually very cheap to craft. It's only five base panels, a reservoir, an impeller, and two steel ingots. It's not very expensive, you can totally get quite a few of these. Okay, so we got a little setup over here. The bevel gear, um, of course, because the fluid compression chamber does require power in through the bottom. It does require shaft power. And uh, its minimum power requirement is 16,384 watts at 1,024 Newton meters. So that does have this minimum torque requirement, which comes out to 16 range per second. So you can power this at a very basic level using a steam engine, although I wouldn't recommend it, and this is why, is that the storage capacity of this compression chamber depends on how much power you're giving it. It can store up to one million buckets, not millibuckets, a million buckets of fluid. That's a lot, that is a lot of liquid storage in a single block. I think it's the highest liquid storage in a single block in the game, although I could be wrong. I, I don't really know if there's like about those like deep storage units or whatever if you can store liquid in them. I have no idea. I know that it can store a heck of a lot. Alright? We gotta give it more power. So at its most basic uh, level of power, we'll see just how much stuff it can store. So you can store gases and liquids in this. Liquid pipes do connect. Uh, fluid ducts from thermal expansion connect. Uh, you know, it's, it's all quite good. If I were to put water on this, You can see that even though it has like a 1 billion millibucket storage capacity for water, it only stores 2,500 right now because there's not enough power going into it to store more. Okay? And liquids require significantly more uh, higher power to store in this thing than gases do. Case in point, I'm not sure if liquid pipes will work. Well, they won't work for this. Let's put down a fluid duct. We've got here a drum of uranium hexafluoride, so from Reactor Craft, which we did a video about before. Uranium hexafluoride gas, remember. If I hit it and get it to come out, it's going into this now. Well, it would if I got rid of this and put an empty one down. You can see that with the same amount of power, we can store 20,000 millibuckets of uranium hexafluoride. So, you know, 20,000 millibuckets of gas versus 2,500 millibuckets of water. Quite a significant difference in power requirement for water and gas. But as it should be, because gas is, you know, probably easier to store, uh, compress. Okay, so it's in utility machines. So let's take a look at its page. So the fluid compression chamber has, uh, I thought it had a formula here. I thought I had a formula for how much it could store. It doesn't. Um, so just give it more power. Uh, let's, let's, let's see. Oh, and by the way, this thing can store pretty much any liquids that you could ever think of. A couple of things. Uh, lubricant hoses and fuel lines will not connect to it. But that does not mean you can't store lubricant or fuel in this thing. And I don't know if this is intentional or a bug that it doesn't connect. Um, because it does store these fluids. I wonder if it's just a graphical glitch. I haven't actually tried. Nah, it's not connecting. But it does store these liquids. Uh, if I were to use a fluid duct with this reservoir of ethanol, you can see that it does indeed store the ethanol. So there are, you know, just uh, it pretty much, if you can connect it to the compression chamber, you can store it pretty much. I mean, I've got here a drum of meat a drum of liquid meat and we can store liquid meat in our compression chamber so you can store like pretty much anything in this thing alright so let's go to gases how much power do you have to give this thing to store you know how much so let's just go through here and we'll go through this currently we're giving it the power of a steam engine Let's go ahead and give it the power of a gas engine, and we'll see what happens. But we do need to have it at 1024 uh, newton meters of torque, so we'll just boost it up. Um, we'll just, uh, I don't know. Let's see if we can do this, actually. Let's see if we can go um, one radian, and 
536 of torque. Yes, you can. So with the compression chamber, it requires torque. So I would highly recommend gearing it down uh, to its highest amount of uh, torque. Get the speed down to one uh, of whatever power you're putting into it because it, it, it only requires uh, torque. And you see this is storing more and more and more, quite a bit of, fluid, uh, of liquid actually. So let's break that. Let's uh, bump this back down and we'll see with our m minimum power level at 16384 how much we can store if we gear it down to one radians per second. Remember, this is a gas. Remember, 20,000 was our baseline before with 1024 newton meters. Now you've got 16,000 newton meters, and we can store 48,800 millibuckets of this uranium gas. It actually drained the drone completely. Um, let's get our liquid pipe back, just because it's easier. And we'll put some water in here, and we'll see uh, what the liquid does. Remember, this is the minimum amount of power. This is 16,384 watts. This is the same power we gave it the first time around when it only stored 2,500 millibuckets. But it's because we have geared this uh, down to only one radian per second, so we have geared this to use p to be pure torque, it can store 63,987 millibuckets of water, which is just under the amount that a standard reservoir can store. So at minimum power, you're you're pretty much, as far as liquids go, you're you're looking at it only being about as good as a reservoir. The difference being that reservoirs can be stacked together uh, to add themselves together. So you really like pretty much everything else in rotary craft. You're gonna want to give it more power to get a better result. Um, so let's see what we can get liquid-wise out of 65,536. Oh, we need more water. <laughs> like, why isn't this working? More water. Actually, let me just whack it with a magic wand. This is live testing. So, 65, 536. This is the entire output of a gas engine uh, geared to pure torque. And we can see that it is storing quite a lot. There we go. 2.5 million millibuckets of water. Quite nice. What happens if we give it the output of a hydrokinetic engine? 524, 288. 524, 288. That's a lot. <laughs> this is the entire output of a hydrokinetic engine uh, geared to torque, which, that's a lot of torque. We're just going to see how much water we can store. Who knows? Maybe it'll fill up. I don't know how much power this thing requires for maximum storage. But we'll see. Climbing, 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 climbing. So it is storing quite a, quite a lot. But, uh, yeah, we're only at 8 million right now, millibuckets. Uh, 9 million millibuckets. So, got a long way to go to get to a billion. Um... But yeah, this, this thing you can see, this thing stores a lot, an awful lot. It's at 10 million right now. Um, I'm not really sure. I don't know how how big you have to build it, but I do know that those those like railcraft multi-block tanks, I think you got to make them kind of big or make them out of steel uh, in order to store, you know, like 10 million uh, millipockets of a liquid. It has to be quite large. This thing does it in a single uh, block. It's quite nice. Obviously, you've got to give it a lot of power to get this much storage, but you know, if you're in a position where you need to store this amount of something, you probably have the ability to generate that kind of power. To be honest, I mean, why would you need like 20 million millibuckets of anything if you store it in a single block if you didn't have those capabilities? Uh, <laughs> what are we up to now? We're up to 20 million? Yeah, it's still going. And remember, if this was a gas we're putting in here, it would be even. It would, it would store even more. So, yeah, you know, right. I, just, I don't have a number for you as to what amount of power you have to give it to get the maximum storage. Just figure it out. Put it in a creative world. Keep adding power. See how long it takes. I'm gonna let this run, um, and we'll find out 
you when it stops. There it goes. Actually, sweet, it stopped. Haha. <laughs> I was about ready to cut the video. Uh, so, 25 million millibuckets of water at um, the output of a full output of a hydrokinetic engine, which is just uh, totally geared for pure torque. Um, that's 25 million millibuckets. This thing can store a billion millibuckets. You know what that means? That means that in order to get to a million millibuckets for liquid storage, it's going to take a lot more power. A lot more power. A lot more power. I wish there was a I wish there was a, a formula on the wiki pa uh, on, on, on the page for this, but uh, yeah, this thing's going to take a ton of power if you want to store a billion millibuckets of of, of, of water, of liquid. Um, it's definitely cheaper on power to store gases. But you can just see that this thing can store an awful lot. I mean, when would you need 25 million millibuckets of almost anything? Um, some good uses for this would include uh, if you're storing up... Basically, I, I could see myself using this to store... Uh, deuterium and tritium for a fusion reactor. <laughs> pretty much what I can see myself using this for. Um, it's pretty cool, though. It, it's nice. I like it. I like the, the scalableness of this storage medium. Unlike those multi-tank structures, you don't have to make the structure bigger to store more. Just give it more power. Uh, pretty cool. Now, if I cut this power, obviously this compression chamber doesn't suddenly lose all of its resources. It, it obviously keeps... The, uh, the liquid that's in it, and uh, if we, where'd my liquid pipe go? I think I got rid of it. If we grab a liquid pipe, we can see that, uh, oh. Okay, so the liquid pipe appears to have exploded, um, probably because of too much pressure, I would say, coming out of the compression chamber. Oh, goodness, and it spawned water everywhere. Well, I'd say, uh, just use that to block it off. So yeah, watch out. Uh, remember, content's under pressure. So these liquid pipes, um, they, 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 they broke. I'm pretty sure these fluid ducts wouldn't break. They don't, they don't do that. Let's get a, a res here. And oh, I need another lever. Now it's got to go up block. So there we go. <laughs> Pulling water out of it. So it doesn't need to have power to get the liquid out. Um, it doesn't lose its contents if it loses power. It just can't store... You can't pump anything else in. But yeah, it's the fluid compression chamber, so careful with it. Uh, careful, because these uh, liquid pipes and stuff do have a pressure limit. But um, yeah, that's the fluid compression chamber. You can store any liquid you want. Um, I've tried some of the I tried the molten metals and it worked, but other things don't work. I don't think there's any liquid that can go into one of these drums that can't go into the uh, fluid compression chamber. If there is a mod liquid that can't go into it, I don't know what it is because um, it seems to take everything. But yes, the fluid compression chamber, pretty darn awesome. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Uh, stay tuned for future episodes. There is a big build video coming up, uh, so look forward to that. I'm Silent Leach, and I'm signing out.